This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC. Hello, my name is Dr. Rob Page and welcome to Doc Talk. Doc Talk is a podcast that is de- that has been developed and is run by the Knoxville Academy of Medicine, which features its member physicians giving information that is pertinent to patients in their everyday lives and for uh, information that they can use uh, in terms of bettering their health care. Uh, and today I feel fortunate to have with me Dr. Eric Penniman. Uh, Dr. Penniman is the medical director for Summit Medical Group. Uh, is a family practitioner, um, and is here to talk to us today about hypertension. Yeah. Um, now, hypertension is something that all patients know about. It's something that they've all been screened for. But you're here to tell me that there are have been some changes in terms of how we look at hypertension and how we should screen for it. But I think, first of all, let's talk about what is hypertension. Yeah, hypertension... The layman's term is high blood pressure, right? And there's many different causes of hypertension, but all of them have high blood pressure and all can lead to cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, all sorts of problems. In fact, it's one of the number one modifiable risk factors that causes cardiovascular death. And so it's really worthwhile uh, screening for it and then, of course, treating it if somebody has it. So it's so important in terms of risk factors for heart attacks, for kidney disease, uh, for uh, other, uh, you know, uh, you have problems with your eyes, you can have problems with all sorts of your organ systems. Yes, yeah. um, and we all have had our blood pressure measured, measured when we go to the doctor. Yep. Um, we go to the emergency room, you get your blood pressure man- measured, you go to the, you know, you go anywhere, you get your blood pressure measured. You can go to the, you know, go to the drugstore and get your blood yeah, pressure measured. Right, right. Um, but that's not, that we've determined that, and you were telling me earlier that that's not the best way to be able to evaluate our blood pressure. Right, exactly. You know, and what a lot of people don't know is that when we exercise, the systolic blood pressure, the top number, naturally goes up. And so we could take a world-class athlete like a wide receiver from the UT football team and who should have great blood pressure and no problems. I could put him on a treadmill, get him working really hard and measure his blood pressure and his systolic will easily be 150, 160. And people might say, oh my gosh, that's high, right? Well, Unfortunately, that's what happens when a lot of our patients come into the office, just walking into the office. It creates a little extra anxiety and nervousness, and they're worried, oh man, is my doctor going to say I have hypertension? So in essence, that is causing the increased tension. It can cause the blood pressure to falsely elevate. And one of the things I want to talk about is uh, the importance of, number one, measuring blood pressure correctly, and specifically, the importance of home blood pressure readings. Okay. Now, 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 why? Now, now, we, now we know why doing it correctly, and I think you're going to tell us in a few minutes exactly how we should be doing it. But why is home blood pressure more important to measure than the blood pressure we get at the office? Yeah, awesome question. And the way I explain it to my patients is, I can measure it while you're in the office, but that represents about 0.01 percent of your life. And what I'm most interested in is, well, what is your blood pressure when you're not in the doctor's office, which is almost all of the time. And so. Uh, finding out what it is when you're relaxed. And, you know, one of the real keys when we ask people to measure blood pressure is don't just you know, run around, do yard work, quick sit down at your kitchen table, throw a cuff on your arm and push the button and check your blood pressure because it's going to be high. Right. And then that's going to cause you to get more nervous about it. And it's also going to cause us to potentially over treat you. And so we want to appropriately treat people but we also want to make sure that we're properly measuring it and treating the right people. Gotcha. So, um, so I'm a patient, and I, I I've been diagnosed with hypertension, or maybe I have risk factors for hypertension. You know, I'm, I'm overweight, uh, African American. You know, could have you know some of the risk factors. Therefore, how should what should I do if I if I'm either being treated for hypertension and worried about getting hypertension in terms of being able to screen myself as a patient? Yeah. So there's a variety of ways you could get it screened. Of course, I definitely recommend, you know, going in and seeing your doctor. If it is a little high, then he can talk to you about what to do to get it checked. You know, a lot of the pharmacies and grocery stores have a little blood pressure booth and you can sit down. But once again, how many people are actually sitting in that little booth for five minutes before they turn the machine on? 
you know, and of course, if there's a line behind you, you're not going to wait because you know people are waiting. And so it's really hard to get an accurate blood pressure reading, even in one of the grocery store settings. And so oftentimes somebody who may have borderline high blood pressure, I often recommend that they buy a blood pressure cuff, particularly one of the automated ones that you can purchase for really 35, 40 bucks. Or there's a variety of other things that we can do. We can order up what's called remote patient monitoring and that can electronically send readings back to the doctor's office. So there's some more higher technology type uh, solutions as well. But, you know, getting it screened at a health fair or in the doctor's office is a good starting point. We never diagnose somebody as having hypertension based on one reading. Right. So if it's elevated, doesn't mean you have it. We want to get repeated re uh, readings to find out, okay, is it consistently high? And if so, then, of course, there's a whole medical workup we need to do before we just up and start treating the person. Now, now having having looked in, in places like Amazon or, and you know, which, of course, where everything is nowadays. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. uh, but uh, looking at Amazon, there are all kinds of blood pressure monitors that are in there. There are ones that you can put on your wrist. Yeah. There are ones you can put on your arm. I believe there's some that even, you can even put on your fingers. Right. Yeah. Um, which one would you recommend that we get? Yeah, this, the gold standard is still an upper arm cuff. One of the biggest mistakes a lot of patients make is they buy a cuff that's too small. And so it's actually better to buy a bigger cuff than your arm. Bigger is better when it comes to, to an upper arm cuff. Uh, the finger uh, cuffs, uh, you know, I don't know how they, why they even created them. The validity of those is not great. And the further away you are from the heart, it's, uh, the less accurate it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And so definitely the upper arm cuff is what I always recommend for my patients. Okay, so, so it should have an upper arm cuff. Um, is there, now, now is there a uh, particular, so you mentioned we should be resting for at least five minutes, shouldn't be coming in from doing something else. Um, are there any particular times, times of the day that we should measure our blood pressure? Uh, what should, wh how should we be sitting? I mean, should we be, you know, is this something we can do where we just, you know, we're getting our breakfast and we're sitting down to eat and we all, all of a sudden want to measure our blood pressure while we're eating? Right. You know, I mean, lo looking for an opportune time, what would you recommend a patient do yes. uh, in terms of being able to, to get accurate reading and get good readings that we can be able to, you know, base, base treatment decisions? Right. So first and foremost, like you said, you want to be resting, relaxed. And so I always encourage my patients, check your blood pressure at a couple of different times during the day. And that way we get an idea. If you only check it first thing in the morning, then we know what your blood pressure is first thing in the morning, but we don't know what it is after dinner or in the afternoon. Particularly if you love a lot of salty foods, you may find out that your morning blood pressure is okay, but your afternoon blood pressure is high. Well, that puts the person at risk. So checking it at different times, but as far as how to check it, make sure you're sitting comfortable, resting for at least five minutes before checking it. Make sure that both feet are flat on the ground. A lot of people that just naturally, they'll cross their ankles. And believe it or not, just crossing your ankles will cause a falsely elevated blood pressure. Wow. So don't cross your legs, don't cross your ankles. Feet flat, comfortable, make sure your back is resting. And then ideally when you put the cuff on, try to have your arm at heart level, but you don't want to hold your arm up because that's causing your muscles to create extra pressure in the arm. You want your arm relaxed. And so ideally resting on your kitchen table, relaxed, um, and then turn it on and check it. So, so if I have my arm up, the, the, the musculature, what if I have my arm like way down like this? Is that going to yeah. artificially lower it or is that? It's going to give you an inaccurate an reading. And ultimately, if I'm going to treat you for hypertension, I want to make sure that we've got accurate readings and that you truly have hypertension. Gotcha. You know, and if you if you do something that falsely gives you a low reading, then you may have undiagnosed hypertension. And like I said, it leads to heart attacks, strokes, you know, and of all the things we do in medicine, lowering cholesterol, helping people quit smoking, uh, hypertension, uh, as far as number needed to treat to avoid heart attack and stroke in the next five years is the most effective thing that we do. Wow. is control blood pressure. So that's why it's so important. I'll be darned. So, yeah. so, so, um, well, you, you, you mentioned that, you know, it's a, it's an important screening tool for us to be able to do ourselves. Now, this is not something that necessarily patients have heard about. So their physician is not, cause this is, as you said, it's a fairly novel recommendation. Yeah. So is this, so, um, if I've been diagnosed with hypertension, would it be a good idea for me to go get my own blood pressure cuff to start measuring my, my blood pressure? And in what other situations would I be a patient who would, who would benefit from doing this? Yeah. You know, like you said, if there's a family history and 
We know that family history definitely is a strong risk factor for developing hypertension. If you're overweight, if you're obese, the likelihood of getting hypertension is much higher. And then as we all age, it just naturally goes up. And so, you know, the older we get, the more likely that it may become a problem. And so at some point, it probably is a good idea for everybody to eventually have one. Uh, although it's one of those things where you want to make sure your blood pressure cuff that you buy is reading accurately. I always ask my patients when you come in for a physical, bring it with you and I can cross check it just to make sure that it's gotcha. reading relatively accurately. And, and to make sure we're doing it correctly, we're sitting correctly, that we're doing it, you know, that, because, you know, it, it's not it's not a highly technical procedure, right. but, but it's one that you want to standardize so you have it the same every single time, yeah, right? Absolutely. So you're, absolutely. Not, you're not measuring during different times and getting crazy. Right. Well, you, you know, it's... Um, now, what if I'm a patient um, and I've been screened for as a physical for uh, insurance, sure. and I've, I've had and I've been diagnosed with hypertension, you know, for insurance? Is this is that is that some other situation where in which you know I mean, having had it done myself, you know, I can speak from my own uh, that you know was this another situation where you think artificially your blood pressure would be elevated? Maybe you may or may not have hypertension or right. Yeah, I think like I said, we never base the diagnosis of hypertension on one blood pressure reading. And particularly if it's done at a stressful time, it may not be that uh, that relevant. And so, you know, getting it checked afterwards and know gotcha. if you go for an insurance physical and your blood pressure is elevated, they should never deny your insurance based on that one reading. They, <clears throat> excuse me, they should recommend that you go see your doctor, now hopefully, and get it further evaluated. But yeah. Gotcha. So um, now you mentioned that that um, this is something that can be easily treatable, mm -hmm. um, and we, of course, we, you know, we know that bl blood pressure is something that you know we don't have to worry about it being a special procedure. Right. Um, to, yeah. That, but uh, you know, I would think about the cost of actually buying your own. Um, your blood pressure uh, cuff, is this something that, that I could maybe get paid for by insurance or would this be something that, uh, that I could have, uh, you know, if I was, if, if I just, you know, if I really wanted to be able to do this myself and didn't have the monies to go spend on that, um, what options would be available to me? Yeah, the insurance coverage is sort of spotty when it comes to uh, covering that, um, you know, remote patient monitoring. Uh, if you're a Medicare age patient, that's generally covered. But uh, so there isn't anything. And what is that? For, so that's a technology that ut utilizes devices uh, that will measure blood pressure that will automatically communicate via cellular networks right back to the, your physician's office. So he gets the readings and can be alerted if you're having really high blood pressure. And so I think that'll be the next frontier. And maybe we should do a doc talk on the <laughs> benefits of remote patient monitoring. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to yeah. say, well, being able to screen patients, as we well know, is much better than seeing patients when they're sick and coming into the office. Yeah, absolutely. So, yep. so and, and, yeah. and especially, and if we can get patients to Coming to the office without actually coming into the office, I'm sure that that's the, probably the best way to do it as oh, well. Yeah. So yeah, I think we've learned a lot about that during yeah. uh, during coronavirus with being able to see patients virtually, et cetera, and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so um, let's talk about, uh, we talked about risk factors for hypertension. Let's say I have hypertension. Um, what sort of things should I do to, uh, you know, in addition to maybe take, you know, having medical therapies, their mm -hmm. medications, we had lots of different medications to lower blood pressure. Yep. What other things can I do to help naturally lower my blood pressure? Yeah, the, the two things that help more than anything are weight loss and exercise. And if our ultimate goal is to live a long time with a quality of life, exercise will do that more than anything else that we do. And so Physical exercise will lower your blood pressure, it'll improve your quality of life, your overall sense of satisfaction. And so getting into a good exercise routine is just extremely critical. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, because the benefits are such, I mean, not only in terms of our physical health, but our mental health. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, and it yeah. just, the benefits I think have just constantly been proven that, you know, staying physically active is one of the things that, that we really need to do in, in order mm -hmm. to be able to stay, you know, physically, mentally, mentally, uh, mental accuracy. I think there's yeah. been studies with Alzheimer's that have been done in yeah. terms of, in terms of risk factors for exercise. So exercise has so many good benefits that we yeah. know about. So, yeah. Yeah. so excellent. Well, I appreciate you telling us about, about how to measure our blood pressure today. You're with Summit yep. Medical Group. Um, and Summit Medical Group is, if we live in East Tennessee, we are not very far from any of the offices of Summit Medical Group. Yep, that's a good way to say it, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, we're in 15 counties. We have 70 clinics all over those 15 counties, uh, from Greenville all the way down to Athens, Madisonville, up to Campbell County and Jacksboro. 
So, yep, we're all over. Well, th th let's say I'm a patient and I'm interested in coming to see a Summit Medical Doctor. Um, how would I be able to find out if there was a Summit Doctor in, you know, or the closest Summit Medical Doctor to me? I shouldn't say if there is one because there probably is one. But. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> summitmedical.com. You can just go there right in the upper banner. It'll have locations or you can search for the doctor depending on if there's certain characteristics. Maybe you like a female doctor versus male or pediatrician or a family doctor, what have you, you can find what you're looking for. Or if one's closer to me or further away or, yep, you know, their yeah. office hours. Yeah, Because absolutely. they run, to, I mean, because your offices run all kinds of a variety of hours, don't yes, they? I mean, this absolutely. is not, so yep. we're not, we're, we wouldn't be necessarily stuck in just going to from nine to five. There's some that are open later, yes, some that are absolutely. open earlier. Yep. And so you're never far away. And so I'm also going to have David put the phone number if you're interested, if you don't have necessarily access to a computer um, or in the internet, there also is a phone number we're going to put across here for the general number to access yeah, Summit Medical good. Group. So, well, thank you so much for joining yeah, me here today to pleasure. talk to us about yeah. blood pressure. This was informative for me as well, yeah. uh, because I think that it, it's one of those things that we, you know, we all get anxious when we go to the doctor. Um, you know, our blood pressure is automatically going to be slightly elevated as it is, and we really want to be able to know is is that a real measure of our blood pressure, and is this have we been diagnosed with something maybe that we should go back and see our doctor and make sure that we're actually monitoring it correctly. Maybe we're on medicines we don't necessarily need to be on. Uh, maybe we, you know, there are medicines that we need to be on. And so, thank yeah. you. So much and then of yeah. course you you also emphasize the importance of how you measure your blood pressure yes how you sit how you put your feet on the ground and all the different things that you do yep well dr penman thank you so much for joining yeah. me here today and for talking yeah. to us about you know some of the things that we don't really appreciate about hypertension that we know you know we all sort of know about the big things about heart attacks and strokes and the issues yep. involved in there but just being able to do the you know the simple things to monitor ourselves yeah so, yeah uh, and with that this concludes this episode of doc talk Doc Talk is a podcast that is produced by the Knoxville Academy of Medicine and features its members' physicians giving information to patients that are important for them in their continued health care, uh, including topical issues and, and ones to help better their medical futures. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Rob Page. This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC.